Hey everybody, on today's episode of Active Self Protection Extra, I'm here with my friend John Espy. I got a serious thing I want to talk to you about today. Um, that uh, John's ministry, SWAT Ministries International, you rescue girls out of sex trafficking or train other ministries that go rescue yeah. underage girls out of sex trafficking. Huge problem in America. Uh, we're here tonight at Attitude First Martial Arts Academy. Going to take some snuggle struggles tonight, so we got our uniforms on. Um, but I want to talk about the seriousness of sex trafficking and mm. the size of the problem, yeah. and uh, particularly for our audience, how yeah. girls get sold into sex slavery. Yeah. So let's talk about it. So tell us about your ministry a little bit, John, so we can kind of understand why you have such a passion here. Yeah, so what we do is we partner with organizations that send in people every night to go bring children out of slavery. Literally, they're sold into sex slavery. Kids as young as three and four years old are being sold. He's not joking. Mm, yeah, there was just not, not long ago, there was a, a four-year-old uh, rescued out in the Philippines, and there was a, they actually, in one raid, was a six-month-old that was in the, oh, in the raffle. So... Um, Anyway, so yeah, there's, it's, it's a horrific thing. So what we do is we help train uh, people that go in undercover to do this, to pull them out of that nightmare. And so that's really our, our, our heart uh, is to help those guys get these kids out of there. So, uh, I mean, I'd imagine maybe the, the vectors are a little different in Thailand or in another country versus the U.S., but, mm. but how, does it, how does that happen? How does a, a five-year-old kid, or here in the U.S., I hear a lot of kids, 12, 13, 14 yeah. years old, that end up in, in literally slavery, guys. And I'm, I'm not joking with you. They get sold from one person to another and used for sexual gratification yeah. by evil deviants. Um, how does that happen? Um, well, one of the things that, that really f fuels it, uh, A, is demand for it, of course, uh, for that sexual deviancy that's there or that sexual new thing. Um, and so that's one, one thing that fuels it. Uh, the other thing is poverty. And so uh, when a lot, of the, a lot of these kids are, are really brought from really poor areas and they're, they're, more, they're easily targeted, more easily targeted uh, because they're in this really bad environment. So uh, a, a trafficker may go to, a, let's say in our context, a village in, um, up in the mountain somewhere, uh, find a family that has five or six kids and the kids are literally about to starve to death. Um, and so one guy comes in and says, hey, so you got a you know, 12-year-old daughter there. I'll, I'll bring her with me to, back to the big city, have a job for her. She can work for me, and she'll send money back every month. And here's, you know, here's a, you know, a couple hundred bucks to show you I'm serious, kind of thing. And what, you know, mother who's trying to feed her kids and not almost starve to death and try to feed, feed herself um, would not go, hey, this is an opportunity for my kid not to die. And so they would sell them off that way. Wow. Um, sometimes it's 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 um, uh, deception how it works, and sometimes the parents just actually sell them uh, outright because of, of drug situations. Oh. Um, there was one girl that we are very closely connected with, got sold when she was five uh, by her dad um, for drugs. And so, uh, and then about, a few, about four months later, her mother went and got her back. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the, the, the two factors that, that really we see most of is poverty linked with demand is kind of the, yeah. the, the, the recipe for trafficking to happen. Well, and I think uh, what I see here in the U.S. and what I've heard so much of in the U.S. is, is that these young girls get stalked online yeah. mm -hmm. and then they get convinced and yeah. kidnapped. And, uh, and some of that is um, bogus because parents get involved. And, yeah. and, and you, if you think parents in America won't sell their daughter oh, yeah. to uh, a, a sex trafficker, to a pimp, and then mm -hmm. claim that she was kidnapped yeah. or she ran away from home, you're fooling yourself. There is that kind of evil. And yeah. sometimes kids get lured into yeah. running away, and then exactly. by the time they know they're a slave, yeah. it's, it's, it's too, late. too late. You know, there's nothing they can do. A lot of them are, groom like there's a grooming process that happens online, especially in the United States. It ha a lot happens online. The grooming happens uh, on the social media sites and the, uh, things that your kids are on. There's people out there actively stalking kids yeah. to, to bring them out there. They're finding girls who maybe are a little bit on the low self-esteem side, whose family's life's not great and they can start promising things and start showing them affection, showing them love and yep. start drawing them out and then they gain their trust and then they start dating them yep. uh, and then once uh, one of, the, one of the, the, the traffickers said one time said if I can get them to sleep with one person the first time I know I got them forever. Forever. Yeah. And, and you think, I, I, I'm guessing some of you out here think that this is an isolated problem and this is something that doesn't happen much in the U.S. Mm. Uh, I would be willing to say there are more underage kids in sex slavery in America than there are in Thailand. Possibly. Um, mm. and, and it's a huge problem mm. world over and here it's a huge problem as mm. well. So um, any ideas, John, on how to keep that from happening to your kid? Um, be a parent. <laughs> be a good parent. Be a nosy parent. Yeah, get up in your kid's yeah. social media. Get exactly. up in their phone. 
I'm like, oh, I don't want to be in their privacy. Screw their privacy. They're in your house. They're your kids. Get up in your stuff. Because, I mean, if you want to keep them safe, really, and, and I mean, that's really the, the main way of doing that is just being about, about their lives, knowing who they're at, knowing who they're going to, knowing who they're talking to. Um, man, check their stuff yeah, um, because you want to keep them safe. And there's people out there that, that want to hurt your kids, that want to do really bad things to them. Mm -hmm. and, and not to be paranoid, but to be aware. Well, and, and honestly, so in my kids' lives, um, you know, they have smart devices and we have nanny software on their yeah. smart device that we get sent. Here's yeah. what's going on in their world. And, uh, and we check it, you know, yeah. and we watch their world and, and they're not allowed to have any contact with anybody they don't know in real life. Yeah. And, uh, and these things do happen. So uh, I just want you to be aware that it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem the world around. I thank yeah. God for men like you who are helping fight that problem. And of course, we've got to fight it at the demand level yeah. as well. And in my worldview, that means changing hearts and minds, um, yeah. not just hitting fools upside the head with a baseball yeah. bat, uh, yeah. though sometimes that's necessary too. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but protecting our kids. I don't know that we can save them all, but we can save some. Yeah, and, and here's a thought for you, right? You may have seen this out there in the world that there's the idea of the man standing on the beach throwing starfish yeah. back into the ocean, right? And you know, there's, a, there's a whole beach full of starfish and guys just picking up a starfish and throwing it into the ocean. And somebody else comes up to him and goes, man, why are you bothering? You can't possibly save enough to make a difference. And he picks up another one and throws it in the ocean and says, it mattered to that one. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And so every, every kid we can rescue and help them turn yeah. their heart and their mind around is a life saved yeah. and that's of inestimable value. Exactly. So uh, if somebody wanted to help you do that, become a financial partner, John, how would they find you? Uh, check us out at um, swapministryintl.org is our, our website. You can check us out on Facebook, uh, Swap Ministry International. Uh, we're there. You can check us on Facebook. You can, there's donate buttons there. We're on Instagram. Uh, all those ways to kind of connect to this will connect you to uh, a donate site. So. And guys, I, I just appreciate it if you would. I'm going to guarantee you when I post this video to YouTube and, and title it appropriately, YouTube's going to demonetize this video. There's just zero question about that. They're not going to let me make any money on it. That's fine. I'm totally down with that. But what I would just really appreciate you doing is go and at least make a one-time gift. You know, donate five bucks, ten bucks, yeah. or become a, a, a regular financial supporter of SWAT Ministries. And I got to tell you, if you got to choose between being a patron member of Active Self Protection and being a supporter of SWAT Ministries, be a, be a member of SWAT Ministries and, and support them. Because my wife and I do every month, and I'd appreciate you too. So, bro, thanks for the knowledge. Thank you, bro. God bless.